welcome to Unscripted Faith. We are so happy to have you joining us. Today is September 11th, and as many of us take time to reflect on that event and that moment in history, we can maybe still be trying to mend from those wounds, but today we assure you, you're going to leave knowing the goodness of God will sustain you through all things. I'm Angela Madden, and I'm here with Jay Gilbert. You know, it's going to be so good today because we are going to have a couple of great pastors with us. We're going to be discussing uh, persecution. We've got the debates that just happened, which was, oh, I can't wait to get in on that there. There's so many different things that are happening. We've got the election that's coming up, the 23rd commemoration of 9-11 and where we all were. I mean, do you remember where you were? Oh, yeah. I was at Boston College campus in my dorm room, and I had a lot of friends who were actually from New York. And I can remember my roommate busting into the room, Angela, Angela. And we just turned on the TV, and it was one of those moments that you're like, I can't believe I'm actually watching this happen, wow. you know, and unfold. How about you? Yeah, I was at work, actually. I was working with some mental uh, health people at the time, and uh, I was there. And matter of fact, uh, I was at this exact moment in time when you guys are watching this, I was actually at home with my parents, and we are watching, just couldn't believe. But you know what's amazing? In the middle of all of this that's gone on, Thank God, 23 years later, America's still here yes. and we're still here. Even though we may have yes. lost some different things, we're still here. God has been faithful and I yes. believe the best is yet to come. Yes, and that's the power of the gospel, right? Amen. That's the power of Jesus, that no matter what comes our direction, he gives us strength to endure it all. I'm Amen. excited Amen. for today's program be because great. we have a powerful yes, yes, two yes, yes, guests, yes. pastors here. We have uh, Pastor Tyler, actually, from Movement Church, is going to join us first. First. And he wrote a book recently called Don't Stop. And I think that is a powerful message for us to all be uh, encouraged by, even in this 9-11, in the thoughts of 9-11, in the thoughts of what may be ahead of us in our future that is unknown. And we get to sit down with Pastor Tyler to discuss his latest book, but also to get his feedback on what is happening in today's world. So Pastor Tyler Feller of Movement Church, we welcome you today to Unscripted Faith. Hey, what an incredible privilege to be here. Thank you so much. And certainly our hearts and prayers are with all the families that even 23 years later on September 11th feel tragedy in their hearts. Amen. Amen. Thank you for saying that too, Pastor Tyler. You know, with 9-11 kind of sitting in the background of today, right? And it's always going to forever mark our hearts. And also the future with yesterday's election, the debates. Um, where, where are you kind of sitting as you're sifting through this with the Lord? What is your heart and what is the revelation that the Lord is giving you? Well, I feel like September 11th reminded the nation that life is fragile. It led to a greater interest in prophetic scriptures and people wanting to have an understanding of eschatology. I remember when September 11th happened that churches became full. They were places of healing and prayer for community. And right now, the opposite of that seems to be happening in our nation. There's a spirit of division in the land. Christians who are spiritual beings sense heaviness. It's because there's a massive war going on in the spiritual realm for the soul of our nation. And it makes sense when you think about the fact that we are just here having an earthly experience, but our, our residency is actually in heaven. And I just want to encourage people, if they feel anxious, if they feel overcome with grief, if they feel fear, depression in the next several days, 55 days until the election, know that you're not crazy. Your spirit is actually being impacted by something that's bigger than your natural understanding and is accustomed to. And my encouragement is take a minute, stop and pray for our nation and uh, ask God that you would have peace about it. And I think it's going to take some intercessors to actually bring about the change that's needed right now. Oh, uh, that's so good, Pastor. Listen, I'm sure you watched the debates last night. I got to get your take on it because I got a chance to tune in. My wife and I told everybody, I'm going to grab my bag of Funyuns. And uh, I was ready for a show. And as always, uh, there's always going to be a little cartoonish type thing going on there. But as a pastor, give us some insight. What did you think about what you witnessed last night in the debates? Well, I hosted a live debate watch party, actually, oh, and I spent man. about an hour and a half after the debate giving lots of really in-depth thoughts about it. And it's interesting that Kamala Harris says, well, you saw two clear pictures of what America is like. And what I saw is in her a candidate that when she talked about abortion lit up. 
And when we think about what it means to be a Christian, it's impossible to be a Christian and support abortion. It just is. And so the fact that she's most passionate about that topic, I found to be really dark and disturbing. Um, there's 10,000 late term abortions every year. She refused to answer questions about that. And the thing that I felt most disheartened about, and maybe you picked up on this, she actually used illustrations of our faith. And she talked about being people of faith and still doing some of those late term abortions. And I found that to be uh, really manipulative to people that are watching that might not be as rooted in their faith. And it, it was disheartening for me. And America has a clear picture. Who do you want to support? And we need the Holy Spirit to guide us on it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, well, it's definitely difficult because uh, I tell people this, you have to pick the lesser of two evils and you really need discernment and understanding on how to be able to navigate this in the election. I think it's really awesome of what you did uh, doing a watch party. That's making me think even on election night, yeah. uh, maybe to do something on that line. I think that'd be a lot of fun to get people together and just have discussion on what's going to happen. Because either way, we're gonna see a massive acceleration that's gonna take place uh, regardless of who gets in office. But listen, I wanna make a little turn here because we're here on 9-11 we've all experienced some sort of 9-11 in our life. We've all had yeah. something where we thought it was gonna be there or family that's been lost and in 24 hours, everything has changed. You've wrote, written this book, Don't Stop, which is outstanding. Talk to us about how we can rebuild in life uh, after a 9-11 hits our world. Well, for me, I was really impacted by COVID. I have some pretty significant long COVID effects and was in the hospital quite a bit, spent about six months in and out of the hospital and spent another six months basically bed bound where I really felt like I'd never be used by God again. And I think so wow. many people can relate to that, whether it was something physically that happened to them. Uh, maybe they were in a situation, I call it being touched by evil in the book, where there was an imprint of the devil that was left on their life, or maybe just their own natural consequences to their sin left them in a pit that they felt like they couldn't get out of. I want to just encourage people and let them know, if you're eight days old or 88 years old, if you have a pulse, you have a purpose, God still wants to use you. If you're not dead, you're not done. Yes. And so the book's really to serve as an encouragement to people to wake up every single day, get a little piece of fuel in their life to move towards the prize that uh, God's called them to. And by the way, that prize, his name is Jesus. We're not after a platform. We're not after a TV show. We're not after getting the most likes on social media. We're not trying to get the ministry committee head job in our church. We're trying to do our best to filter ourselves through an intimate, deep relationship with Jesus. He is the prize. Yes. Yes, Amen. he Amen. is. And if you're not, if he, you're not dead, he's not done. I love that, <laughs> Pastor Tyler. That's powerful. Let me ask you, what do you feel like is one of the greatest attributes of Christ or, or fruit of the Spirit that he implanted in you during those difficult mm. six months or almost a year of struggle? Well, whenever they're prophesying about Jesus being born, one of the ways they describe him is the Prince of Peace. And we see this letter that Paul writes to the church of Philippi, and he says, no matter what you're going through, there's an overwhelming supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding. The remnant of this peace that Jesus left us with is something that we can access. The Bible actually says, let us not forget the benefits. One of the most amazing benefits that we have with the Lord is that peace. I was able to find peace actually through taking communion every day. After I emerged from this difficult COVID season in my life, I remember my head felt like a swirl, like I would be uh, basically being tormented, like, hey, you're never going to uh, amount to anything. Maybe you should just get on disability. You're not going to stand behind a pulpit again. You're not going to be able to preach. You're not going to meaningfully uh, do anything for society. And I just remember feeling like, man, that is not what Jesus died for. It's not what he broke his body for. It's not what he poured his blood out for. And so I ordered about a thousand of those prepackaged communion. I have one right here with me. I take them everywhere with me. And anytime that I felt or sensed that attack from the devil over my life, I would pull down peace from from heaven and I would use his body and his blood to do it. And I would say, I know that this is a wafer and juice or wine or whatever, but I don't need it just to be that. I need something supernatural to happen. I need a supernatural transaction between my heart and heaven. And I would rest in the moment until I felt his presence and something supernatural would happen. His presence would rush over me and I would pull onto earth as it is in heaven. A peace would rush over me. And I feel like I embody that and I walk in that now. 
Wow, yeah. that peace that surpasses understanding, the one who was completely broken for us to be whole. I love that you took that and, and use that daily as you need to see him truly realize within you. Pastor Tyler, what a powerful testimony and Amen. we are so thankful for your ministry in this amazing book. Thank you for being with us today on Unscripted Faith. Thank you for having me. Well, coming up next here, we've got Pastor Matt Geppert. You don't want to miss this. But first, let's check in with Tom Hollis as he dives into the Book of Acts in a new segment called Spirit Walk. Well, we're here in Manesson at one of my favorite places, the His Place Coffee Shop. And we're talking about the Book of Acts and the walking with the Spirit. Now let me tell you a little story. Early in my marriage, we decided we wanted to put a screen door up in, uh, in the apartment. It was like a, uh, it had like a porch and we wanted to put a screen door and we were gonna put a wooden screen door in there. And I have to tell you, all I had to saw and fit this wooden screen door in was one of these. I'm sure you probably have one of these uh, in your garage somewhere. And it was all day sawing. It would think all day to put in a screen door. Well, for me, it, that's what it was. And I would be sawing and sawing and sawing. And so much so that the lady downstairs said, what are you doing up there? Well, I didn't have much power with one of these. Hey, they were good in their time. But you know, a little while later, my wife bought me one of these. Oh, greater love have no woman. And then she buys a power saw for her husband. We understand this, the analogy, don't we? When we connect ourselves, connect ourselves to power, all of a sudden we've got a lot more. Well, let's look at Acts chapter 1, verse 8, because this is the promise. This is the promise we were given from the Lord. He said to his disciples, he said this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. All right, well, let's talk about that. Again, this analogy is pretty easy, right? We connect ourselves to the power of God. A lot of times in ministry, it's been, it felt like I was using one of these, okay? And I wasn't getting very far because God wants us to use one of these. He wants us to use the power of the Holy Spirit. And we can do that by connecting, asking him, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Show me how to use them. Teach me how to walk in the way that I should. And when we do that, when we are filled to the Holy Spirit, filled to overflowing, all of a sudden we have the power. And we're gonna see that next time that they were baptized in the Holy Spirit and they went out and they began to share the gospel with many tongues and in different languages. And 3,000 people came that day to the brand new church of Jesus Christ. Hey, I want to be part of that church. I want to be part of the church that doesn't just seem like we're hammering away or sawing away without any power. Let's be the church that has the power of God with us. He wants to do that. It's not just for the olden days. It's not just for the early church. It's for you and me right now. So there's power for you. You might say, Tom, I don't see that power. Well, ask for the power of the Holy Spirit. He'll give it to you. You'll walk in it. He'll bring people to you that need that power and need to know Him, need to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when He does that, trust that you're going to be working with some serious power, the power of the Holy Spirit. That's going to be a big part of your walk in the Spirit. Well, if you're just tuning in with us, we've been talking about 9-11, the election, and we thank God for what Tom just shared because we're going to need power regardless of who gets in office, regardless of what happens. We have been given power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And we have our next guest here who's no stranger to Cornerstone Television Network and he knows the power of the Holy Ghost. He's the president of CPAC. It's so good to have with you here on Unscripted Faith, Pastor Matt Geppert. 
My joy. Wow, it's so awesome to be with you, friends, and to be on this show. It, I'm just blessed by what God is doing through you and through the show and at Cornerstone, of course. Unscripted faith, let's go. Let's, let's do this, go. man. <laughs> you know, we're so glad to have you, and we ha I'm so glad we have pastors on with yes. us, you know, oh. because all of us are pastors, and, uh, you know, you hear about what Tom mentioned about having power, but then you also take a look at the debates and what happened last night. I mean, if the church is ever needed yeah. to be in position, it's now. What were your take on what you saw last night during the debates? Okay, uh, I'm a, a Christian who happens to be an American, right? So I, I didn't choose yes. to be born in this nation. God put me in this nation. And I do believe that there's no greater nation in the history of the world. Why? Because no nation has done more for the advancement of the gospel, yeah. for spreading the good news of Jesus Christ around the globe than this nation. Yes. So I believe this is the greatest nation. And I'm watching the debate and I'm thinking, Lord, we need to see more of you and less yeah. of men yeah. and yeah. women. We need to see more of you. Yeah. Why is that so important? Because the world is watching. Mm -hmm. If there's yeah. anything I can bring to this, it's just a uh, wake up to Americans. The globe yeah. is plugging in to see what is happening in our nation at this time. Mm. So I'm asking Christians around the world, pray for our country, yeah. pray for the United States. As you watch these debates, think, okay, Lord, how can I be praying for each of these individuals? Yeah. Whoever you're going to put in office, how can I be praying for them? How can I start to pray? Yeah. And then the next encouragement is you got to vote. You got yeah. to get out there. You got to vote. Biblical values. Would you agree? Absolutely. How yeah. important is that? Absolutely. Well, I, I believe we're called to it. Uh, you know, just like we're called in the Great Commission to get up and go out. Yeah. Uh, okay, listen, if you want to see change in the country, first ask the Lord, what does he want to see? Yes. And then go out and be a part of it. Voting is a part of that process. Amen. Pastor Matt, you mentioned the global impact of the United States. There truly is no nation that is impacting globally like we are. Talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing across the globe as believers, what they're kind of going through and, and where they are and where they hope to be going. So SCAPC, CPAC, the ministry that I serve, uh, is uh, serving communities of prayer in 164 different nations awesome. and territories. We wow. have 34 offices around the world. So yeah. I have to be plugged in to what's happening yes. internationally just in that role. And uh, few know here in the United States that our largest exported good from the United States is culture. And yeah. it is consumed yeah. ad nausea right. around the world. People wow. want to see and want to be a part of what's happening in the United States of America. I have the joy, election weekend, I'm actually preaching in Taipei, Taiwan. That's wow. Sunday before the election. And um, you better believe that in Taiwan, they are paying close attention to this election and they understand that the results of this election will have ramifications in their nation. The world is aware of that. Wow. Let's talk about that, the results of the election. Uh, I want to hear more from you on what you see. I mean, uh, obviously, whoever gets in office, something is going to happen. You've mentioned how everyone around the world is saying, okay, who gets in office? Why do you think whoever gets in office is so important in the season? And what do you think will be the results that we're going to see as, as whoever gets in there. This is our anniversary of September 11th. Uh, the truth is that that act of violence on this nation was focused towards Christians. Mm. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. yeah. So religious persecution around the world, the majority of that persecution is focused on Christian faith. So when we talk about religious freedoms, globally, friends of mine who are in these different nations, they're persecuted for the, they face persecution every day. Yeah. And they look to the United States of America as a nation who would provide some level of protection, some level of, uh, you know, encouragement. We're with you, we're standing with you, we'll support you. We're gonna fight for religious freedoms. I mean, I've had the joy of uh, advocating for persecuted Christians in government. Uh, I've been brought into government uh, conversations to present evidence on religious persecution, on friends of mine who have faced real deal persecution. And as we were talking, persecution yeah. is a promise from God. Yeah. 
It's a part of this walk. Why is prayer so important? Because when persecution comes, that's where we can plug in to the Holy Spirit. That's where we can pray and watch the Holy Spirit lift us high above those persecuted moments. That's what the rest of the world can't understand. The power of the Christian faith, the power of the resurrected Christ in us that lifts us so much higher than any of these persecutions or battles or circumstances. Do you think that persecution is needed for the body of Christ in this season, especially in America, because, you know, we love our comforts, oh. you know, we, we love all the, the things that come, the padded pews, yeah. crystal chandeliers, all the wonderful teaching that tickle our ear, the appetizing desserts. Do you think persecution is important to get the church mobilized and motivated the way God wants it to be? I would love for every American Christian to get on a plane with me for a month, come to the other wow. side of the world, yeah. walk in it, feel it, and know how blessed we are. We have lost sight of how blessed we are, how God has blessed us. And in this space of blessing, what are we doing with it? What are we doing with it? Are we just consuming it? So to answer the question, a little persecution isn't a bad thing. Uh, That's church history. Every part of church history has had an element of persecution and the result of that persecution has been glorious Mm. in Christ where the world gets to see him and not us. Amen, amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a little bit more with Pastor Matt right after this break, so stay tuned. We're gonna talk a little bit more about how you can tap into power in the midst of persecution. With our thanks for your generous gift this month, Request your 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar when you give in support of Cornerstone Television Network. Inside the calendar, you'll discover stunning photos of sites in the land of Israel that have been vital to the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Plus, find encouragement through Scripture, reminding us of God's faithfulness in the midst of struggle. The 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar features beautiful pictures of the Holy Land, room to track important dates, American and Jewish holidays, and a victory scripture for every month. Thank you in advance. Your partnership allows us to reach the lost through Christian television, provide our 24-7 prayer line, and support outreach to widows, orphans, and more. To request your calendar, call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Well, welcome back to Unscripted Faith. We're so glad that you've tuned in with us and we have with us Pastor Matt Geppert. Listen, I'm so glad uh, to have you here today. We're so yes. glad. And uh, you, you really are an example to the body of Christ in the midst of persecution. And I so love your heart for the unadulterated power of the gospel. How have you, as a believer, encountered persecution and seen the power of God in active in your life? Thank you for the compliments. I love you too. Listen, I'm a mess. We all are, yeah. we all are. We're walking in this by faith, by yeah. faith. We're trusting in the Lord that when tough times come, when persecution comes, when we face these things that we can't explain and we can't figure out, and we can't get out of, when those challenges come, prayer is that gift from heaven. Prayer, we can actually commune with our Father in heaven and the things of heaven can become real around us. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe we can't change the outcome. He's in control of the outcome of all things. He's in control of the outcome of this election that's that's coming up. But we can change the atmosphere through prayer. That's right. When we begin to pray, that atmosphere around us shifts. Amen. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we come up into the things of heaven. What are the things of heaven? Health, provision, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Identity. We know exactly who we are. Thank you, Lord. And when we don't pray, man, we get caught up in trying to figure those things out. Where am I going to get my health? Where am I going to find my provision? Where, where am I going to find understanding for what's going on? Or who am I? And that's really the big one at the core of it. Amen. Well, let me ask you, yeah. where have you seen God's power in your life in the midst of uh, persecution or struggle or hardships? Oh. I feel like, honestly, when we were talking earlier, that perspective shift that he continues to bring, when you center on Christ, who is good all the time, regardless of our circumstances, and you look up, you focus on him, you find him. 
He's never missing. He's always found. And so there have been so many different moments, Pastor Jay, even when I think about 9-11 or moments where I felt that my own personal well-being was at risk and threatened. When I focused on Jesus and that cry became a prayer, I felt his presence, his protection, and his safety. And I really believe in this hour within the bride, we must keep our gaze on him. Amen. I feel, you know, the debates are wonderful. The, the outside inf influencers, they're wonderful. Their voices are great. But we must only have ears to hear his voice. Amen. And when we follow another, we're, we're, we're following blind into ditches. We're going down paths of darkness and destruction. And so what about you, Pastor Jay? Well, you know, I've had, I'm so thankful um, for my wife. And we opened up a pregnancy center in the midst of COVID. Wow. And uh, obviously, you know, it's very controversial with the election and everything that's going on. Yes. And um, it was the first time I ever got death threats. Wow. Uh, my wife had death threats. We've had our building uh, uh, decorated, if you want to call it that, uh, all these types of things. And people ask me all the time, they'll say, man, how does it feel? I mean, how do you guys deal with that? I said, I've never felt more excited about finally doing something for the kingdom of God that was worthy of Come persecution. On. Come yeah. on. For once right. in my life. Let's see, it's go. easy to preach, Pastor Matt, yeah. in the pulpit yeah. to, a, to the choir. Yeah. Get out, yes. the, it's streets. A, get out yes. in the streets where Come they don't on. like you. And what's wow. amazing is you will see the power of yes. God come oh, upon right. you. It's kind of like the scripture says, I want to know him yeah. in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of the suffering, being made conformable into his death, which I'm sure you have experienced <laughs> well, in your world. You know, I grew up in this household. My parents are missionaries. You know, I grew up smuggling Bibles into nations where it wow. wasn't permitted. And, and I have been arrested doing that. I've been arrested for the word of God and, and being able to witness the power of the Lord in those moments. And more recently in this country, in the United States, I was asked to come to a public school. And before I went to share, uh, a woman asked me, you know, she came up, she said, hey, don't say the name of Jesus. I said, excuse me. She said, don't say Jesus. And I said, you just said it twice. What, you can say, I can't say. What, what's the difference? And, and then I thought, of all the words I was permitted to say in that school on that day, the one word is Jesus. Why? Think of how powerful. How powerful. Now, I have to confess that I said the name of Jesus as many times as I possibly <laughs> could because I don't think anyone could the, the, keep me from saying his name. I know what he did for me. I know what he did for me. You yes. can't stop me from saying his name. And I have the joy of, uh, of being able to say that I was invited back because I wow. carried that in love. Not in, not in I'm going to show this person. Yes. But okay, we're gonna talk about Jesus in the way he truly is. The one who loves, the Prince of Peace, the one who can change this place for the better. Yes. And uh, friendships have been formed as a result of that. Persecution's a promise, it's gonna come, come it's gonna come. So unscripted faith, we need faith in Amen. those moments. Let's pray for faith to rise up in boldness in those moments. Yes. Yes. Well, thank Amen. you, Pastor Matt, for being with us. Thank Always you. a joy yes. to have you, and we pray God's blessing upon you and all that you continue to do. Love you guys. Yes. Thank Amen. You. Well, God bless you all today. We so appreciate you for tuning in. We hope that you've been blessed. Regardless of who gets in office, remember, Jesus Christ is in control. We'll see you next time on Unscripted Faith. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.